It's cheap in Spanish. Yes, lads, what's up? <laughs> it's Painos, and that's not a euphemism, but you can pretend it is in the comments if you fancy. This is my very own Seat Ibiza 1.8 Turbo 20 Valve Cupra. If you think that's a long name, it kind of is. It's a Seat Ibiza Cupra, a 2006 nonetheless, which makes it one of the weirdest Cupras you could potentially buy on the market today, and something that's got a few interesting little bids and bobs that's English for quirks and features that you might want to take a peek at. Touch, like, tickle that like button for me as well. Maybe hit the sub if you're not subscribed. Bell, if you want, if you want to hit my notifications, but YouTube doesn't really give my notifications out. So if you want to hear from me in the future, you want to see karting, you want to see more reviews, some tutorials, bell button. Bah! So I bought this about a year ago and I've been promising a review for just as long. It's an Ibiza, but it's a Cupra but it has the engine of the Mark IV Golf GTI with a bigger turbo, with bigger meteor bits. So it's faster than the Mark IV Golf GTI, but it's not as well built as the Mark IV Golf GTI, which weren't cars that were very well built in the first place. So it kind of, yeah. As y'all can maybe see, um, she isn't exactly stock either. We have a Miltec catback exhaust on there and a mystery stage one map that runs about a bar and a bit of boost, 1.2 bar, which is equivalent to sort of uh, just under half a bar, more than the cars produced stock. It keeps up with the JCWs with like 210 brake, um, and it's not quite as fast as the 350Z, so uh, that's roughly as quick as it is. <laughs> so Sayet made the 1.8 turbo Ibiza Cupras through 04 to about 07, uh, all with manual gearboxes, which was a really cool, like a really cool decision. They made some turbo diesel Coopers as well that looked identical to this. So they did a flip turn in about 2008 and decided that all their hot hatches were gonna be DSG boxes, which were all chocolate and with the twin, char twin charged supercharger, turbocharger jobs, which were also chocolate, they didn't get that good of a reputation for the rest of their life until fairly recently when they brought back in the 1.8 it's a tsi now with the manual gearbox option again i don't even think they do automatics anymore so the new ones are technically the new versions of this bad boy being the 1.8 turbo one of uh, volkswagen's og tuner engines with far too many valves for its own good you can push a fair bit of power in these until you get bendy rod syndrome at about 300 plus newton meters of torque. So this one is a BBU engine code. As much as that means to any of y'all, but it means it's not the forged ones. It is like the standard engines that you had in the Mark IV Golf GTI with the KO3S turbo, slightly, uh, slightly whizzier than the KO3, but not as good as the KO4. So you can put a KO4 in these, you do need to do piping and weird stuff, but it's possible. I can't sit on the roof. It's cheap in Spanish. As a certified hot hatch, you do have to be wearing a certified pair of shades to go along with it, and maybe a snapback, if that takes your fancy. Maybe um, a gym tank top and some shorts as well. And you have to be blasting grime out the speakers as well. It's just part of, part of the contract with buying one of these. Screw the fist test, we're talking about the foot test here. You can fit a whole foot in there and some, and what else do you need? Let's be real now. What you do get is a car that's surprisingly quick once it grips up and goes. No limited slip diff. It's just a classic hot hatch. Scrabbly, fun. The rear axles are torsion beam jobby. Independent front. <laughs> so turn in. There's some reaction from the back. It loves a bit of lift off oversteer as well. So it does like to murder you, especially with the cheap budget tires on the back and the semi-decent ones on the front. So it, it will try and kill you. 
stability control button, turn it off even more so, and you'll find that in the wet, second, third, maybe fourth, are all pretty useless. So we have AP Racing, four pot calipers on the front. Weird, say it special, uh, own brand speciale, um, your granny's car, rear discs on the back, which are about a third of the size of the front. It really does stop. The car weighs 1,150, maybe one one two hundred. So it's light, but not like classic mini light. Uh, it, it's not gonna, you know, tin can on you if you have a shunt, which is nice as well, but it's not necessarily one of the safest either. Insurance for me at uh, 21, uh, 22 now, but 21, with like four years no claims was like just under a grand a year. So it's hot hatch problems and yob problems. So let's go for a quick drive and I will tell you a little bit more about the car and less nerdy facts and more what it's actually like to uh, be a yob in this old Spanish piece of kit with a German bit. Buddy, I don't know. So, is this car like a warm hatch, a hot hatch? I'd say it's pretty warm. Compared to modern day standard hot hatches that have like 300 plus horsepower, stock, this thing's fairly warm. With the stage one, stage two remaps, um, and any bits you want to do to it, exhaust, intake, all of that, then it gets pretty hot, pretty spicy. With the open differential, it does mean it's a little bit <laughs> airy. Um, it does like to spin up. And it may be because of the moldy budget tires, but it is a little bit sometimes. And that was a scientific description. So, again, first gear is a little bit bitey. You kind of can't use it properly. It's a, <laughs> it's a little bit violent. Um, second is really nice when it grips up as well. There is some turbo lag. For example, if I put my foot down a second, hmm, thinking about it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> that is definitely some hmm turbo thunking time. Controls are heavy. Clutch is heavy. The gear change is quite heavy. But the steering's nicely weighted. It's, it's heavy in a nice way. Um, <laughs> Keep in mind, this is old say it build quality. Now, what old say it build quality means is that there's rattles. Um, the suspension is rock solid, which doesn't roll too much but it, it's high doesn't look that great um, and things the plastic interior trim is like as scratchy and hard and rattly as you like what it does mean is that these are cheap as chips now again two two and a bit grand you can get these for less sometimes um, with full service history all that the gubbins and you can make them surprisingly fast cars um, when you start doing bits to them as well because no one really expects these to be as quick as they are um, and they, they do shift. About two and a half grand it starts to pull from um, and it really is a nice shove. Like it's a sho nice shove in the kidneys, you can feel it. Um, again, steering's nice and weighty. Um, nice leather steering wheel, leather wrap gear knob but that's about it for how nice the interior is. Again, this one in particular, this window rattles um, there's some rattles from the dash. <laughs> um, it does have a weird aftermarket Pioneer jobby with an aux in, which is nice, but the speakers on the right side are completely dead. The speakers on the left are kind of rattly. Um, it's had a hard life. We've got a five-speed manual, um, which in fifth is allegedly capable of reaching 143 mile an hour, which in this small car, allegedly, <laughs> feels quite, quite speedy, shall we say. It's cheap, it's, you're not particularly as afraid of people dinging it. You can absolutely chuck it responsibly around country lanes with nice responsive controls. So, you know, you're not too worried about people coming the other way and you being like eight feet wide because it's not a big car. <laughs> it generally wants to, <laughs> it does put a grin on your face. It comes alive when you're going for it. It absolutely comes alive when you start booting it. Around town, meh. When you're on it, 
running down a country lane with a couple of other cool cars. Honestly, it is some of the most fun you can have. That's just that wheel spinning up. <laughs> yes, it is. The MPG is like 39 to 40 on the motorway. It will get 40 if you're being super gentle. Um, you know, running your boost, your bar of boost, then, you know, a, a good run's gonna be mid 20s. So, and if it's cold, then even less than that. Warm up your cars responsibly, boys and girls. You can get, you know, that's the nice thing about hot hatches, especially the modern ones. You can get like decent MPG off the big hoon which is perfect, so whatever mood you're in, they're super adaptable, you know, you're not forced into one mode. Um, this car's not got any modes, it's just on it is the only mode. Send it is your only mode, which is the only mode you should have, really. The AP 4 pot calipers are very good, very good. Um, the normal FR brakes are sort of famously not great, but these ones are oversized. They are prone to, like, seizing um, because of reasons so that these cars do have quite a lot that goes wrong with them and the 1.8 turbo the old one um, with too many valves is notorious notorious for having boost leaks um, bendy rods <laughs> it just it's, it's a little bit too complicated for its own good <laughs> my experience with this car though has been when, you're, when you want to go for a nice, um, entertaining drive, honestly, I, I've had so much fun in it. It has got a little bit grating, listening to those noises, doing long journeys. But again, with 40 MPG and fifth gear is quite long and extended, it's not revving, it's not buzzing its head off. Uh, it picks up super nice on the motorway as well, in fifth or fourth gear, whatever you want to be in. Gear shift is quite nice. Gear shift is quite nice. Um, it looks like it won't be great just from the throw of it and how tall it is, but it's quite clicky, quite direct. Um, it has been a bit abused, I think, this one. Um, so first and reverse sometimes decide to not work. <laughs> but hey, that's part of the thing. I think they're not that strong, these gearboxes. So a map and some abuse and you might find that it doesn't like you very much anymore. It's good fun. Is it the most fun you could have for like a couple grand? It, maybe not. You could get some rear wheel drive like old MX-5s or something that might be more fun to just skid around. But can you get something as fast, as reliable, as low mileage as this for the money? I don't think you could. Honestly, it's one of those underrated buys right now. They are kind of rare. I did a video on that. But if you want something interesting, unique, you don't mind a small car, you don't mind a car that maybe looks like a hamster with a big butt on it, then the Seat Ibiza 1.8 turbo 20 valve Cupra, or the FR for that matter, because it's the same engine just with different bits on it, different brakes and everything, could be the buy for you. Thank you so much for watching the video today, everyone. If you want to see some more reviews, like button, bell or that subscription ting we've just gone over 55,000 subs as well which is mad so thank you for that i'm putting more of an emphasis on like vlogs karting fun stuff um and just being me you know because everyone knows me as the oh hill start guy but you know tutorial dude well you do tutorials we're actually going to be like a youtuber and enjoy ourselves so i will see you in the next video hit that sub button and i'll chat you later peace